Hey everybody, Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com and you are live on the RC Groups podcast. I have an awesome story on why we're a little late today. <laughs> Matt, that better, that better be good because, uh, well, most of your stories are pretty epic to begin with. So I assume this one's going to have something to do with uh, yes, a yes. over and uh-huh. raccoons, maybe. What else we got? Samurai sword involved in this story on latest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What else I got? It has nothing to do with RC. No drones involved. No nothing like that. Oh no, I was attacked by a drone. Yeah, it happens on a regular basis. They come right at you. They come straight for your face. That they do. Where's Jason? I don't know, man. We lost him. Uh, He's there. There He is. is. There he is. He's all bundled up. We're live, live, man. Hey, everybody. All right. So here's what happened. Uh, Matt can kind of relate, but not yet, but, but it'll be a good precursor for you in the future. Hopefully it'll be cheaper for you. <laughs> I had a wireless card. One of our old RC groups, wireless cards, uh, still had a term on it. And so I called up Verizon and I said, listen, can I keep the phone number? He said, yeah. I said, all right, I have an iPhone four here. My favorite iPhone. I've said everyone here in the house has heard this because it's the classic, most classic iPhone. I think Jason, you're an iPhone expert. Do you have a favorite iPhone? Uh, it's always the latest one. Yeah. Is that, is that a proper answer? <laughs> well, the beauty about the four is that it was such a, a little handful. I mean, it wasn't too big and, uh, it's, this is a white version and I believe, you know, some of them were tougher than others. So anyway, um, my son is 14. And he, he'll be like, I'm going to John's house and he's gone and he's gone for hours. And so I said, is it time to get that dude a phone? And she said, yeah. So he had no idea. So I called Verizon, had him switch the number. Now it's, uh, and set it up on that iPhone four. And then I went in his room and asked him a question and hit it under a video game. Oh and my God. Went da- he went downstairs and went to my wife's office and I said, call Truman on his new number. And, and you can hear it ring 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 and then you hear him because he doesn't walk he runs everywhere he goes stop 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 across the living room uh, upstairs stop 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 down the stairs and he says someone left their phone in our in my room <laughs> and i said well uh angela why don't you ask siri to call him uh, call that number again and she goes call truman's iphone <laughs> <laughs> and you can see his brain he start cranking and he goes wait do i have a phone so (laughs) what is his was he jumping up and down screaming or was he subdued when you finally when you told him that he was like wait what version is this can i Uh, jump how can i put more ram and i'm like you can't do any of that stuff this is like a thing that's going to be something you use not something you you uh, change (laughs) that's awesome he immediately defaulted to how do i upgrade its ram Uh, the first word out of his mouth was jailbreak Really? He wants to jailbreak it? Why does he want? He doesn't even, uh, I would say that I'm wrong. He probably knows exactly what he can do if he jailbreaks it. He he has an Android that doesn't was, is an on no system. It was his grandmother's old phone. mm -hmm. He jailbroke that thing six ways to Sunday, you know, so. Wow. So anyway, that's why I was like, I was on time, but the actual reveal took a little longer than I expected. I'm sure you were looking at the clock. It was three o'clock in your head. You were like, dang, nab it. I was running. <laughs> I had to change yeah. shirts. You know, you can't see it because of my lower there. This is a <sighs> pretty cool there. flying giant shirt. Nice. Nice. Push so this what's up, down. y'all? Got a lot of news going on. Got a lot of yeah. things happening in our there, world. Not only a lot of news, live viewers, but uh, Jason's got, excuse me. Jason's got some stuff that shipped to him. Matt Gunn, I believe you had a few things shipped to you. I did not get the airplane I was waiting on, but I did get some cool stuff right here that I'll show in a minute. I got cool stuff. Jason got cool stuff. I wish I had my radio with me. Uh, Why? Are you going to do that? I'm going to get it. I'll be right back. It's just, it's right here. I love it it when people run away from the podcast because they must be getting something good, you know? Yeah, and you do it all the time. You always come back with something <laughs> quite interesting, like a frying pan from 1879 that killed an elephant that was wild or something, oh, you know. Or by wing, my second airplane I ever had. I always forget what the name of that wing was. Zaggy? A Zaggy, yeah. A Zaggy. I want to call it a Wingo, but that's... Wingo. It. Wingo was like the first real purpose FPV plane, right? That wasn't even designed to be an FPV We plane. sold the Wingo. 
at RC groups. So I had multiple <clears throat> Wingos. Can't believe I don't have one left. I, I must have, I went through an anti hoarder phase and that must have been what happened. Do you I'm going through that smiley? right now. What, what, Jason? Flex Smiley. No. Anybody no. remember that? No. When I was when I was in college and looking up RC stuff and uh, just wanted an airplane, that was the airplane that got my attention. It was a multiplex Smiley. It was a twin engine, you know, electric, mm -hmm. uh, foamy plane that just looked super cool at the time for me. And I was like, I've got to have this. It was totally not the right airplane to buy as a beginner, and I didn't buy it. And it, luckily, the Glider Club turned me on to the right stuff to get. But that was the plane that that got me excited about the hobby and like this is cool stuff nice my you first, know, go ahead my first rc plane um i grew up around airports and my uncle had an air hanger and two cessnas and my grandpa took me to air shows and so i had just lost my record label uh the the money people decided digital music wasn't viable and that they were gonna dilute yeah, they were right weren't they <laughs> oh, man. Oh. i'm facebook friends with the guy who made that decision he's yet to pm me and say boy what a mistake we made yeah. So, but anyway, uh, I didn't have anything to do. I went to a garage sale and across the street for $5 was this giant white airplane. It was an Italian trainer. I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was $5 and how could I not buy something that cool? It was completely built and I took it to the Jason, the local airfield. So Bob basically helped me finish that airplane. It took me a month. And then I, when it took off and flew, the thing that I'd been, I bought it assembled. Then I put the motor and servos and all that stuff. I just couldn't believe it flew. It just blew my mind yeah. that it was in the air and then landed. I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> I remember that feeling with the Dura plane. Cool. Remember the Dura plane? Yeah, I know that guy. Oh yeah, yeah. That was my first plane with a forty-six on it oh. and high-tech, um, a high-tech four-channel transmitter and high-tech servos. Ah, that thing was so much fun. Dura plane made out of coroplast. Yes. That's it. Coreplast and PVC square tube. And a, I a, he, that guy's channel, a pro bro. Channel. He comes yeah. to Nashville every year. The designer of that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'd like, he got me started then because that was my first plane. I'll, I'll tell him. Uh, that well, wing was made out of literal um, styrofoam, like from a from a cooler. It was, there was no difference between it and a cooler. There was no EPP or no one was using nope. EPO or EPP or Lapior no, or anything. Lapior. <laughs> yeah. One other thing, uh, Jason and I, when we worked at Hobby Lobby, we would always not only get in the airplanes we're going to sell, we'd be the first people to see them. So when the, when the truck showed up and Mike Hines would be like, oh, we've got a blah, blah today. Everyone would gather around as we opened the boxes to see it. But occasionally we got prototypes and the prototype that I, I missed that I didn't get my hands on. And I don't know if you're around for this. Uh, uh, what is the uh, Bixler based off of the easy star? Mm -hmm. Easy star came out with a twin engine that was stupid powerful. And uh, I knew immediately I wanted it, but it wasn't mine to keep. My, Easy I don't know. Star Twin, huh? Yeah. I think they make it now. But back then, it was no one had ever done it. And holy cow, it just tons of power. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking. I don't see it anyway. Um, I'm looking just to. The other thing we got, Jason, it. I always remember is that shark. Was it a ducted fan shark? It was like this big. It looked like you a know real what shark. what we did with that shark? Yeah. Was that the original fat shark? No, 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 no. Well, it was Fat Shark. It was an EDF shark from this big. one of the one of the free wing, one of the jet manufacturers at the time. It sucked air through its mouth. Yeah. It looked actually pretty cool, and it really flew really nice. And what they ended up doing was, I didn't, I don't really watch the Colbert show, but I guess Stephen Colbert it's has a character. The Colbert Report. The Colbert Report um, had a like called Sharky or something. There was a character. And then so they they painted him up and dressed him up like Sharky, put a note or something, boxed it up, and actually shipped it to Steven. <laughs> but nothing oh, yeah. ever happened, right? And we never heard anything else. <laughs> they probably never even made it to him. They probably yeah, they probably uh, filtered it out, and they're like, this could have uh, anthrax in it. We're gonna let this go. <laughs> yeah. You know? Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. everybody, we have a congratulations are in order today for Jason Cole, who's now a fully functional 107 registered. That's right. Pilot. Welcome to the club, pat, Jason. Pat it on the back. Yeah. So my article actually is out today. I ended up using the uh, UAVGroundSchool.com, uh, which is 
part of Cliff Whitney at Atlanta Hobbies, other business and things that they do. And uh, they do a lot of flight training. So I used that course, started it about the middle of the month, I think, in uh, August. Went through, learned all the information, went and took my test on Friday and got a 93%. I missed four questions. Got it. So I got my uh, temporary certificate email uh, today. So I printed that off and I have that. And now I'm just waiting for the the actual printed card to come later. So Jason, really cool. I, I actually printed out your certificate to carry with us on events in case you ever were like, uh, uh, if someone needed certificate, Okay, I can't talk, but I, I have that now officially in case anyone ever needs yep. it officially. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, That's you could cool. jump on the. Uh, you could drive yourself down to, uh, what is it for the Miami area because they're hiring, uh, and paying. Uh -huh. They're paying travel and lodging for teams of two with Inspire training to go down there and do pre and post flights oh, for telephone stuff. Yeah. yeah. So they're doing that right now. I don't know what they pay. It's probably not like the most competitive pay out there, but it, it would be some, if I was single, which is the, the way I lead a lot of my statements right now, <laughs> if I was single, I would be down there right now. I would just drive South knowing that my room and, 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 uh, pay would my room and driving would be paid for. And, yeah. But uh, do you know that your room's going to be a room? <laughs> yeah. Right. It's <laughs> I'll be sleeping out in the back of my pickup, but it's going to uh, be crazy. What an experience that would be. I don't well, know. You don't have actually. the right truck for it. You can just sleep on the roof of your truck. I can sleep on the roof of my truck. Yep. I've got the fold out uh, camper. You're missing goes, a boat. You need a boat. Yeah, that would be one thing to have is a boat uh, and uh, a uh, suit of armor to protect me from flying two by fours. Seriously. You're a prepper. You would have your solar powered energy source and you'd have everything you need. I'm quite the prepper. I have lots of food stored along with lots of bullets. I was looking over here, not to go too far off course, but on my shelf, that's 45 ammo, nine millimeter ammo, and then uh, power bars that my wife put right next to, I thought, nice. do I, where did this ammo come from? Oh, it's power bars. <laughs> what is that other thing? Is that a coffee maker? Check, check. Here? Yeah. That's a trash can. No, <gasps> got a trash can in your room. So Kyle says he wants to take his uh, 107 eventually. And, and Kyle, I got to say, man, it is not as daunting or as hard as you might think it is. I mean, there's a lot of information to learn, but mm -hmm. take the UAV ground school course, get some online training, uh, do some practice tests, and you'll go nail it. It's it's really pretty easy. So um, here's, here's what I did. I took the uh, ground – school written for a full pilot's license well over 10 years ago um, and I scored like a 98 on it and I was going to get my full pilot's license and I never did never never took the check ride ran out of money just sat on it never retained any of the knowledge except for my love of weather and aviation that's it so when it came time to take the test I took it on day one for the 107 I did not the only thing I studied was what the FAA recommended to study on day one, which was nothing but uh, drone information. They don't give you anything else on the FAA's website. At least they didn't when I first took it. So I went in there and I got an 82. And that was running on uh, 10 years downtime after taking that test. So I passed it. That means that even with minimal studying, somebody could pass it with given today's information. And they have, like what you're saying, Jason, they have a lot of pertinent information out there after thousands of people have taken the test. They've got great pools of yeah. questions. If you just take those questions and learn every time that you uh, make a mistake, you pick the right answer and you just keep taking it over and over again, yep. you will pass. Yep. And what I think is cool about the, the course, I don't know, I know there's several other online things out there, but what I like about the course that I took is that it is online based so they continuously update it with the latest information but it's also a lifetime membership so you have to retake the test every two years to stay current um and then so in two years i'm going to forget a lot of this stupid stuff that should not be on the test for a drone pilot um and then so i'll need to go in and take a refresher and and i have that ability now that it's there and easy to do so i like it so if I did it right, maybe, 
You we're looking it? at some of the screenshots of the application from Cliff Whitney, Atlanta Hobby, that Jason used to help pass his test. Somebody asked if this is, uh, if it carries over into Canada. It does not. It is only for the United States of America. Which, which goes along with Mac. Well, what if a Canadian resident is in the United States airspace wanting to fly commercially? I think I, I think know. you can get a part one one oh seven. There oh, were yeah. uh, there were options for that non US resident. Um so I believe you can. You'd have to look up the regulations for sure. But But if you're in Canada and you want to order something from Matt, you can't. We know <laughs> that's a fact. Oh my gosh, what a nightmare. <laughs> That was anyway. That's so true. the next the next steps for me really is is looking at some different waivers. Night, you know, it's actually called the daylight waiver for some mm -hmm. reason. Now, what about indoor? Uh, there's no um, indoor. There's no, waiver, there's no right? laws against them. There's no yeah. There's no regulations for indoor. Well, let me ask you that. Let's say I own an Inspire Two and they want me to fly in a large studio. Indoors, um, it doesn't matter. They can't tell you what to do. Exactly, yeah, it's not but, national airspace. But I know that Inspire loves the satellites, and so is it also all... got sonar and ground-based stuff that it'll fly just as stable position holding. I was wondering about that. Yep. Okay. Yep. If you don't have a GPS signal, it will default to Addy mode. Addy mode. Addy mode. That's what it says. And then uh, you just fly the heck out of it. You know. Right. So no problem at all. Well, I, I want for the Mavic yeah. indoors though, just because it's smaller and less uh, less damage. Gigantic. Yeah. Well, I got a box, and uh -oh. you know that we love on Thursdays to open boxes, so I pre-opened it to save everyone from that painful experience. It is yeah, pretty bad. I, I remember you. that. Thank you. And inside <laughs> is the Focal DVR Boom. Boom. Clarity and Diversity. Now, I'll set this to myself. So I got it. I already did it. We don't look at Jason the whole time. Um. Here's the beauty. Uh, as you may or may not know, the DVRs have become my go-to goggles these days. Everyone has their favorites, and some of them, some, you might base that on your eyeballs, or uh, well, that would be vision, and uh, what you like. And these work for me, and I know it's working if I'm not thinking about it. This is the first time I've opened the package. What? Yeah, so this is cool. These go on the inside this is your they stick on and that is velcro and then you can put on various thickness of foam mm -hmm. on there and then here's my battery pack they seal this to keep the flavor in um it's it sealed. is a freshness nice. seal yeah <laughs> it's packed for freshness right and so then here are the focal uh, the dvrs taste of lithium now the beautiful part for me is oh look at that led screen uh, the question for me, or what I always need is, I need you to see, the person that's looking at my review, what I'm seeing in the goggles. And so what I was doing, what I was having to do before is be in goggles but have a secondary uh, ground unit for DVRing. And by the way, that's not what I see. That's what the ground unit sees. It's not always the same. So these are going to allow me to show you what I'm seeing. So uh, huge benefit having DVR built in here. As the fan, and you make the fan work by plugging in the uh, the the balance balance tab in here. And the only thing that I've been and I meant to do this before the show started, and I did not because I was taking care of my boy. Um, I'd love that it has an LED. My other one does not, and that was uh, going to be replaced. Uh, it is not as Matt Gunn likes to call it, dual diversity. <laughs> not dual diversity. It's not a diversity. But yeah. we were working on theories that we could pull this module out and possibly put a diversity receiver in there. Has anyone verified that? Verified what? You could pull this module out and put diversity in it. Yeah, so that's the whole point of the you module can. system. It just seems so simple that it, it's too simple. Yeah, yeah, there's a uh, there's a number of companies that make modules that go in. Some of them use both sides, one one diversity uh, um, receiver on the other side, and that other uh, hole, right. uh, and then or other ones that do just that one side. Well, that's all awesome. And once again, so uh, I'm going to talk to you guys who come up to me at every show and say, uh, "I wear readers," or "My eyes are funny." Uh, what can I use? Because I'm kind of that guy. If mm -hmm. if it's a if it's a goggle that is for young eyes that anybody can use if they're young, uh, that goes to Nikolai. If it's uh, if your eyes are weird like my eyes, then 
I'm usually the guy that tests it out. These, for whatever reason, always work for me and are totally sharp and crisp. And that's one of the reasons I like them so much. And there's nothing special. You know, I'm not putting special, uh, there's lenses in here and I'm not changing these out for anything. I'm just using yeah. whatever stock. And then the IPDs adjustments, I get those right. And I'm usually good to go. Nice. But then up, up top, there'll be a full review, by the way. And I'm about to talk to Jason about that. Here's all your menu controls. Um, we'll see how these work. I know on some goggles, if they're on the top, when you put on somebody else's head, they always change the channel on you, which drives me crazy. I want to put a shroud over these things. Oh, when they start putting their fingers all over it. Yeah. Yeah. So Jason, um, I know you have a T28 you need to go fly, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But do you have something? I was thinking to review this, uh, maybe you could bring out a bird and I could bring out the goggles yeah. and then I could just, uh, spend my time playing with the goggles and, not as opposed to flying and trying to review goggles mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Hey, that, that doesn't have HDMI, right? Not it does. Level. It uh, has HDMI? Well, hold on. It's got HDMI in. I read it when Ooh. I first got them. So uh, I'm going to Google these. Pro site. Focal DVR. Yeah, I can bring the uh, – we could try out the new HX camera for the Pro site in my uh, mini drac. And I can bring a 5.8 uh, drone or – wing too droner by the way hey if anybody's into uh drone aerial footage there is a podcaster guy named droner d-r-o-n-r and uh this is totally i don't know this guy i just know that whenever i'm searching for good information and i'm looking at podcasts when i usually when i run uh <laughs> actually elliptical i don't run down the street and watch uh, video podcast but uh, <laughs> droner <laughs> d-r-o <laughs> i got my goggles on third person that so uh, anyway, Droner, D-R-O-N-R, uh, he t covers a lot of great topics uh, that have helped me, so they might help you too. So let's look at key features. Wireless head tracking, which I've already done a, a video on because it's not as simple as it sounds, and this does feature that in that other slot that we were looking at. Digital video recording, awesome. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but my assumption is it's going to be awesome. 5.8 receiver with integrated LED screen. The LED screens. It's, yeah, sophisticated. Uh, I'll, I'll leave there. Built-in cooling fan prevents fogging, which is about, well, I guess we're about out of the fogging phase of the season. Adjust IPDs, 800 by 480 optics, selectable 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 aspect like ratio. You can change that aspect ratio. That's yeah, nice. I thought that was, and then here's what I read. Mini HDMI import for increased versatility. Nice. Yeah, we can totally, so that, totally run ProSight with that. That's inc that's awesome. I mean, that's very future proof right there, being able to do that. And last but not least, linear dipole antenna included. Bah, 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 bah. I'm just kidding. Bah. That's well, uh, nice. It's got quad diversity. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I posted in the chat earlier. I'm holding out for deck diversity. I heard that. That was beautiful, Jason. That was good I think work. I said deck and diversity. I just spelled it wrong. Gosh. So uh, the. You Integrated guys. digital video capability allows you to capture FPV, blah, 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 installed FPV. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> now, well, I was looking for special uh, stuff. Though. What was the field of view? It's like 30... eight. It's 38. 38? Let's see. Go uh, back. It's, I think it's 30. Let's go back to him. There we are. It's a solid. FOV. Do you see it? Oh, it's over here. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, where was that field of view hiding? It's, it's the same as the focal V2s, right? They better same. give us that info. The same screen and all that jazz. FOV. Well, there's no FOV on the page. You FOV. Material support related. Bar. Hmm. Very interesting. 32 degree field of view on the Where's V2. So if it's the same as that, it's it's 32. Nice. And for me, that's enough. Um, you know, I'm coming from head plays, which are pretty wide, pretty big. Head but plays, these, insane big. Yeah, yeah. Made too big for many people, actually. You know what? I was wearing head plays at uh, Flight Fest, and some young buck said to me, I pulled those head plays out, and he goes, you wear head plays? Like I was oh, using wow. an eight track. Wow. And I'm like, I go, really? Are they that? I mean, like. Apparently, head plays are not cool. Ah, I don't, I don't know, man. Let me share your video. 
I think if uh, if you're new and you're looking for something and you don't know what you want, a Headplay is a great place to start. And it's great to have two pairs, two sets of goggles or Well, I tell you what, the second you use that HDMI input on them, that view is superb, ah. even if it is only 720. It is in your face and full HD. Uh, it's much better. So Look you can this. tell if, if that's a dog in the field or a possum, like that time where I thought I was following a possum, but it turned out to be one of the other pilot's dogs. <laughs> nice. That's a good story. Look at this thing. So everybody's uh, oohing and on. I think, yeah, Matt Gunn put this up today. And the feature set was what everybody was, uh, let's see if you got the feature set here. But How? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the feature set's in there. Scroll up and each one of the big... Um, Headings is the feature set with video. DVR monitor. That's crazy. Yep. So you have two versions, the RTF and the bind and fly. The RTF comes with a transmitter and a DVR monitor with... Over $200,000. What's that? The problem with this drone for me is it's going to cost me like over two hundred thousand dollars. Green. Elaborate. Because you want the, you're gonna have the drone, but then you gotta have a nice, cool house to fly it in. Purple. Yeah, I was thinking, what do these people yeah. have maids come over before they shoot those videos? <laughs> have you watched? I, sh I shot mine it, in my house, and I'm like, that's not a good idea anyway. Yeah. My house is not nearly big enough for one of these yet, but man. When I get this, I'm gonna shoot out my whole like uh, uh, the safe where I keep all my gold bars. <laughs> I'm gonna fly straight into the combination, and I don't have a safe, everyone. So don't come looking. But oh, this is awesome. I, I I really have to give it to Horizon uh, to take a great idea, make it great, make it greater, and then make it even greater again. I know. I didn't know how they did it. Uh, honestly, I, I mean, I thought it was. I was like, what more can you do to this machine? And apparently, a lot. Well, it goes to eleven. It's one more. Well, I'm going to wait for the Blade and Dutrix FPV Plus Pro Super RTF with Ultra. DVR. I heard that was going to come out next V2. year. V2. I don't know what that connector is, by the way. Someone's asking what the connector is. Go back to that article. We're not what battery is it? Has it got the... Uh, it's got a different style connector on it. Um, they're it's got to be a little... Right? It's a little funky Molex connector. That's all I know. Who wrote it's this article? It's a 500. But yeah, 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 but the connector is just are. like a little Molex, right? What are y'all looking at it in this picture, right, Chill? Right there. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's not your standard. Um, it's bigger than this this older versions. I think it's big. So it's anyway, big. this thing has a number of cool features: larger motors, larger propellers. I assume the frame is larger to fit those. It has um, 600 red. TVL, um, 5.8, 25 milliwatt VTX. And it has LEDs on the rear of it, and the cool feature is meow. Go ahead up to, uh, go back to. Um, Hang it, Jim Graham. I know you're rocking and rolling. Where's so, meow at? Up to the top. Meow, meow mode. Right here. So meow. play play meow mode, and it flips over. Why they call? I don't, why does anybody know why they called it meow mode? A cat always lands on their feet. Ah, oh, Jason, dang, you're good, thanks, dude. Come That's on, it, man. man. Come on. So look at it upside down. <laughs> Reminds me of you and Matt. Or Matt and I on that telephone call. Oh, that's just awesome, though. It's a meow when it does it. I mean, there, there's a lot of times when you're tiny whooping it up and you end up upside down and you're like, crap. Yeah, and like if it's uh, Matt and Jason, they have to go upstairs to the like bedroom to yeah. get it off the light show. Yep. I mean, guys, this is going to be a must have for me. I, I can already see it. Yeah. It's a good thing I've got uh, the first version of this in a box with everything you need. So, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Wow, that's crazy, stupid. Who thought of that? I need to call someone immediately and find and out. who the hell's that. flying that thing? I know. It's it's uh, the potato. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> the Steve. Petrata. The Stevenator. So let's take it off of you. Stop presenting. I like it. I like it a lot. It's pretty sweet. I like it a lot. Pretty sweet. Pretty, By the way, pretty, uh, for you guys that might be interested, it almost seems like this might be outdated now, but a review is coming up. It was just sent to me as the uh, <laughs> Inductrix Pro. 
which in its own right, even though it does not have eight millimeter motors or a larger fans or meow mode or an LED in the back, it is still more powerful than my um, than the my original. original, which is right here. So in case you guys want to see, here is the original Tiny Whoop, and then here is the um, FPV Pro Inductrix. So oh, that's the shot for the podcast right there. Oh, maybe. oh it is right maybe. here. Let's see. Here you go. Right Let me stop. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Damn it! I, I ruined it again. Did you get it? Do it. One, two, three. Make another face. Make a horrified face. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Now make a super excited face. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh wait. Do, do that again, Matt. That's it. Uh, and, and then one, two, three, and nobody talk. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Life gets you down. You know what you got to do? Jason, Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. You're killing it, man. Ready? <laughs> oh, no. Jason's battling you for the front page picture. Ready? One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> <That's all. laughs> okay. ah, what are we doing? Oh, my gosh. Fatanga! Hey, come back. Come on, back here. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Is that really all coming out of your gosh darn jetty? Yeah, it is. It's just How do you funny. have the time to sample this stuff? Hey, just make a quick wave file. It's easy. It's, it's totally easy. legal. So, there's, I mean, this thing is giant, y'all. I didn't know how big it was. Good I guess I thought almighty. it was gonna be big, but holy crap. <clears throat> it's so big. That's what she said. So um, anyway, yeah. it's cute. It's I've been cute. watching The Office lately, guys. So sorry. Have you? Yeah. Anyway, look at that. Look at that. So this is more for like going to the drive-in and showing for the you know showing off for the kids and letting. Oh, them you could totally fly it. that in front of the drive-in screen. Yeah, I mean you they probably they, tell a banner with that. Maybe. <laughs> so it you know it doesn't fly awesome. It flies okay, and it's you know you can. You can hover it and you can fly it around and the tail is super effective. You can do like darting turns like a fish. Um, and it's you know, just cute and cool. But if it's really windy, you're going to get, you know, obviously it's a giant sail in a lot I of directions. You could cut the main fish body out and replace it with the Terry the Transmitter logo body. And then Holy you can have a flying Terry the Transmitter. Flying transmitter, yeah. I guess this proves that you can make anything fly. You can make anything fly. I thought it was a cool idea. I, it was enough. To, I bought this. You know, this isn't a free review model or anything. I was like, I've got to have one of those. But the problem is, where the heck do I put it? You know, it's all you can do. So it's going to bend. You can't really, like, maybe you can hang it somewhere. But I've got no room in here. Mount it over your fireplace. Yes. Just a talking bass. Hang it down from the ceiling. I don't know. It's a problem because it's so big in one piece. Um, Too bad it wouldn't then, fold in. Fold in yeah, I'm surprised that actually flies. But the best part is it cost me 30-something bucks with shipping because I already had the motors and servos and receivers and everything. How so long I did it take had all the equipment. What? How long did it take to build? It was half an hour. Does it land easily without damaging the bottom of it? Yeah, I mean, you so. can't hurt it. It's EPP. I usually catch it just because you can hover it, you know, and bring it right yeah, to you. But catch it. Yeah. I brought it out to the field for uh, Monday. We had a Labor Day fun fly with the club, and uh, they got a kick out of it. So that's what it's all about. It's all the wow factor regardless of how it flies, right? <laughs> but I like the radio, being able to have Dory speak to me while I fly. Well, I wonder if Nemo flies any better. I doubt it. Or yeah, not I don't Nemo, know. Nero. What do they call him? N Nino and Nori. Nino and Nori. <laughs> Way to skirt uh, skirt the laws there, Hobby <laughs> King. Good God Almighty. That's so so I got one more thing I want to show you guys uh, that I just received. Dun, 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 dun. Ready? Coming at you. What is it? What is it? What is it? You can't see it? Go box. Do, yeah. Oh, I see it in the feed now. Oh, it wasn't showing in the feed. Well, I was I was reading the comments, so I didn't uh -huh. see. So, so here we go. Here's nice. the uh, here's the little F27 FPV. Wow. Tell me about it. I am so excited 
about this. That really thing's am. awesome. It is so minuscule and lightweight. And look at that. Look at the little motor on the back of it there. That's and this awesome. is the battery. Look at this. Ready? Here is the battery. It is a 1S280. 2S280. Can you hold that up again? I'm talking to Kim via email, and I'm going to show it to her, Kim at Horizon. Okay, she's now like watching this right now? Uh, maybe. I invited her to the chat, although I'm sure she's in a meeting. Yeah. So here's the little F27 FPV. Well-built little guy. Um, interesting. What I found was interesting. This is new. So you always you come across something new. I've been in this hobby for so long, and yet something brand new just came across uh, with, with regards to how I have to charge. This little 2S280 does not have it only has that little balance tap on the end of it mm -hmm. but it's not a standard 2s balance tap it is proprietary at least proprietary enough that uh ho that horizon hobby um used it so i had to purchase this guy in order to charge this battery pack and which is uh you know you got your bananas that go into your charger you got your balance tap that goes in and then you got this guy that goes right in here so if you do go down this road and you buy one of these, um, you'll need this little dude right here. That's bananas. That is bananas. So let's take the top off. Take a look inside. There's your fitment. There's your battery right there. And I, I once again, I was at Horizon and they showed me the prototype for this. And uh, it's it's kind of weird to have been looking at the prototype and then here's a real thing right there in your hands. Mm -hmm. It's got AS3X and safe in it and it is uh, a decent, got a good camera on the front. So here's something that I found unique. If you guys can see this, right there is the VTX and there's your, um, your linear antenna. Well, that antenna was stuffed way down in the bottom down there. And so I just used a pair of um, hemostats to pull this out and route it so it's sitting right there so when you put the cover on like so your antenna is at least sticking out of the top like that see mm -hmm. so hopefully that will uh, I don't know I mean I could fly it with the antenna stuffed down inside and then do the same flight with the antenna like this and we'll see if there's any difference in flight but super easy to set up I really like the directions that are included with these planes because they tell you literally the exact settings to put into your transmitter. So I took this DX9, I followed it to a T, the uh, settings, and it's now becoming one of my favorite joys is setting up these Horizon Hobby aircraft due to the fact that uh, they tell you exactly what to do. Yeah, and it works, and it's trimmed, and it's going to fly great. <laughs> yes, it is. And look, it's got the little skid protectors on the bottom. Yeah. It's got the little protectors there. This little guy's going to be... I don't awesome. know about you guys, but a lot of times I fly based on convenience, mm -hmm. and FPV can sometimes really be inconvenient to go do it. But this plane Looks and like setup it. makes it seem like just, oh, I, I want to go fly? Okay, let's go. And then you just run out the door, and you yeah. have everything you need. Here, my, my single eye is watching you guys. Oh, oh, that's good. Cyclops, what's up? <laughs> that's all I got. Anyway, <laughs> those are my two items. I got some some uh, FPV goodness from Horizon Hobby. I'm happy. Hey, I have a question for you guys. Um, oh. I always use the stickum on LED lights that comes with it, and it always falls off. What do you do? You hot glue your lights onto whatever vehicle? Do you a CA medium thin? It How depends do you on the type of foam, really. Right. Um, I'd had no problems putting hundreds of LEDs on um, a what is that over there? Bixler 3? You can't see it. Okay, there it is. Let's see. Yeah, I, the one I'm putting it on is the ReadyMade RC uh, Sky Surfer. Yeah, you should not have any. You don't need. Okay, at the ends of each one, I use a dab of hot glue, and that keeps it from starting to peel up. And then it stays put down the entire time. Well, mine, I literally sat on, I was going back there, and I was like, oh, all the LEDs are laying on the ground now. So, Wow, that stinks. Sometimes there's that uh, sort of waxy coating that's on yeah. the... Um, on the phone, that might be the problem. 
I got to tell you also, uh, Nash bro is literally around the corner and that's one of my planes that I fly people around in, in the goggles. And, um, I have yet to get my dang Eagle tree system, um, hot in there. So that's on top of the list. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know what my problem is. I don't know why it won't talk. It's gotta be me. What are you trying to get to talk? I'm confused. My, uh, my flight board, my Eagle tree, you know, Vector. Vector. I'm spacing. Victor. It won't talk with what? It's the Vector, Victor. A USB in, and it, it doesn't see my transmitter. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. A minute. You're, you're plugging the Vector saying, into the USB, and I'm on the screen looking at all the inputs and stuff, setting it up. Yeah. And it's not talking to my transmitter. You mean your receiver? My res no. Well, it depends on how you look at it. If I wiggle the sticks on my transmitter, it never sees it. Did you go through the setup wizard? Did you did you set I, the airframe? The first I, thing to do is set the airframe. I, I think I did, but I think it's been so long now. I'm going to go back in and start exactly all over again. Yeah, and, start over. Select your airframe type first, then do the re, do the wizard. It's right there below the it okay. says, and then that should do it. All right, I got to get it going because I'm going to be needing it. Yepers. I think I'm going to be flying that and the uh, my little wing, my racing wing. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i tell you what I haven't touched, gentlemen. What? Any of my quads. Jason Cohen's last time you flew are like a racing quad. You know, I've, I've got two hanging on the wall, and I was just looking at them the other day, and I was like, I remember when I used to fly those things. <laughs> I barely really have it in a while. I kept my favorites, but I haven't flown them. And I have rules. I, like, if I don't fly you in a year, you're gone. That's a good rule of thumb. Mine's about half that length of time. If I don't fly it within six months, I feel like it's just wasting space. Yeah. Well, hey, so, and, and there's people that would want to fly it, you know, that, that it aren't me. Yeah. I'm going to share screen. I, I want you guys to see something that I'm very excited about. It's the Great Plains Bird of Time EP. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, sir. It's this, a classic. When I was uh, just a wee lad of 25 years old, no, I'm just kidding. When I was uh, a kid, I would thumb through the pages of uh, Tower Talk. You guys remember Tower Talk? <laughs> I do, yeah. The magazines. I think they still have those. I'm sure they do. But anyway, I would always see the original Bird of Time. I had like literally barely gotten my wings learning to fly the Duraplane, and I always wanted a glider. And uh, never did get one. And so finally, I see this Bird of Time just come out the other day on Tower Hobbies. It's the Great Plains Bird of Time EP. It's designed around a 4S LiPo and uh, looks pretty nice. Now, that is a monster 3300 to 3600, and I think they have that in there strictly for balancing purposes. You might be able to put a 2200 4S or an, even an 1800 if you shove it up there in the nose. That's what I had to do with my Mystique. RES. Um, but this looks like a really nice uh, three meter sailplane. It is a uh, three channel, does not have spoilers or obviously no ailerons on it, no spoilers. So it looks like it's going to be a floaty machine. What do you guys think? It's it looks floaty. Like it. Yeah. yeah it's, nice it's got floaty. classic lines, though, that you, you look at it and you instantly know what the airplane is. And that's right. Can be rare in a sea of planes that look similar you know look at that that is one unique wing isn't it and it's uh 219 dollars comes with let's see it does not come with a motor so it requires a 32 size such as the rimfire 60 amp esc and uh, it looks like it comes with um i can't see here am i missing the servos includes uh spinner Motor mount, so it doesn't come with servos. No, it's an RF, right? It doesn't doesn't come right. with. Well, they left that out of the requirements, but uh, yeah. obviously it needs that as well. So I like it; looks cool. Let's go real quick to all, all all RC and see if there's anything else here. Jim's article on AS3X was really nice. So is, the way this happened is, I was at Horizon and I was talking to them about uh, that. I thought AS3X was very powerful in the world of FPV. 
because uh, it does a lot of things that an FPV pilot needs at certain mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. uh, it keeps you safe. Um, it makes flying FPV easier. It keeps you from skittering around corners, all kinds of stuff. And yeah, uh, but it doesn't take away from the flight experience. It's still you still have to learn to fly. Yeah, you no, know, you don't feel it. It's like yeah. magic, <laughs> which sounds nice. corny, like but but, nah, but nah, nah. so we should um, edit this article and just put it's like magic. <laughs> dot 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 like magic. <laughs> and uh, so I had a long talk. We had many dinners over the week that I was there. And then uh, this week I got an email from Kim and she goes, Hey, we have that AS3X article that you were talking about. So mm -hmm. they went in and wrote all the things that I was asking about and bang, it's on the nice. Side. I like it, dude. I think you did really well with that one. Uh, the only other thing was the, um, there's a couple of new planes from here. I'm going to share one more time. If make sure everyone can, I think it's stuck on you, Jim. It was stuck on you. No, it's the feed's working right. All right, so let's try this one more time. I'm going to share screen, and then show you guys three new force aircraft. Now these aren't um, these aren't necessarily brand new airplanes, but the uh, the I like the Bear Bear. I really like this a lot. Now this was a a e-flight airplane is that correct the rare bear was e-flight initially as was the uh, pulse was a e-flight machine and then now force which is a family of brands if you will of horizon hobby force rc now has these three so you got your your bear bear it's difficult to say i keep wanting to say rare bear but you have all these decals different decals that you can put on it and i'm sure you could just hit this bad boy with some spray paint foam safe of course and uh, design your own for it. It's a hundred mile an hour bird, right out the box. Yeah, it's a beast. It's you a also beastie. got, yep. You also got the uh, Blue Angel V2 P and P, which has a more than one to one thrust to weight ratio. So it's a good performer, especially on the vertical uplines. And then you have your well known Pulse 1.4 meter P and P. This Pulse has been around for a couple of years now. Um, I've heard it had some issues with uh, the hinges and stuff like that i don't know if they've taken care of that or not but still a good looking plane so you got these all in the outlet and they seem to be priced pretty well 139 this pulse uh used to be a lot more so it's at 139 i think you've got your blue angel at uh, 149 and then your bear bear which i would definitely take a look at 159 not too shabby i think that's it for our new products that we're looking at Good times. Uh, I got in uh, like 10 minutes before we started recording. I got in the Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer. Wait a minute. That's I thought you've been burning away the midnight plastic on that thing. Not with this one. Now he's got. Remember, he bought the $200 one, and now he's got the $400 one from yeah, so Good. I don't know. I'm impatient, and I knew this was coming, yeah. and I'm going to do an article on it, you know, the review as like a noob, but I was also like – man, I don't know when it's going to arrive and I really want to start 3D printing things. So, so I bought, bought a lot of price uh, <laughs> mini select V2. And oh, I knew well, it to not have it. children and, and income, you can just... And then the other thing that I noticed was watching all these videos of people doing reviews on printers and all this stuff, uh, even just average kind of hobbyist guys, not like professional reviewers, nobody had just one printer. So I was like, you know, I'm going to end up with more than one anyway. Might as well I have two as well. And I heard good things about the Monoprice, and so I was like, I'm going to try that. It's got a smaller print bed. Um, so I was like, so I can do small parts on this, and then I can do the bigger stuff on the i3. Show uh, that Destiny uh, thing that you printed. That, oh, yeah, really, it. That, okay, so Jason printed a Destiny 2. Um, what is that thing called? Well, it's from the first one, but it's uh, it's the little ghost um, a nice print job, man. From yeah, from the game. It's a game I love. So I was like, ah, I'm gonna print a ghost. Now, and did you, it. you like watch TV and paint it, or did you paint it in your room? I just painted it on my table here while some music was playing. Um, Andy's asking. I got the Monoprice uh, Mini Select V2, black one. Um, Both of them have heated beds. That is very important beds. if you want to if you want to have uh, options to print print. Yeah, it's funny. My BMI. first print, I was doing the test print of the cat, um, which is pretty common. And the yeah, first, uh, I didn't have any heat on the print bed because it said that you don't really need any for PLA. 
And so I was like, okay. And then I came over and it was all off the front bed, moving around. The bed was level. I made sure and spent a lot of time doing all that work. Um, but then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try the heated bed. So I, I turned it up to 50. Are you putting your glue down? Or are you I'm not? not using glue, but you don't really need it. Um, with the 50 uh, degrees on the heat bed, I haven't had a single issue since. It never come up. It works, sticks just fine. Um, I would try the glue. I've got some glue that you recommended. I'll try that if I have issues, but so far, so good. Elmer's purple glue sticks. I've yeah. never printed without using glue. I'm, I'm actually um, keenly interested that you can print without anything down there. Yeah, well, it's got the upgraded bed. I mean, the Monoprice has the upgraded, um, I don't remember what they call it, and even the, the iCubic, any cubic here has a, has a bed that's made to print directly on it without any tape or glue or anything um, like that, that. That thing's only 200 bucks, right? Well, the, the Monoprice, the one I bought was 200. This right. one's closer to 400. Can it's we bigger, see the little one too? Bigger and better. Uh, yeah. Let me grab it. Hey, Matt. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, Jim. Um, you know, as taking care of Truman's phone, I now need to take care of my daughter's glasses. Can you print? glasses yeah you can print glass frames and stuff so this is the the monoprice it's that little guy tiny it's got a 110 millimeter print bed um but you can do cool stuff and it's really easy and simple it's got a nice not in touch screen but a color display with the so the fact that it. it works and works well is a, a testament to how far this stuff has come that's, yeah. what, that's what i was going to say jason it came to you you did you have to put it together was it yeah, mostly it together? literally comes out of the box almost like this there's a little um just a little arm here that just slots in place to have the rack for the spool yeah. um, but everything else is built you have to just level your print bed but it actually comes pre-tested and pre-leveled um, so you can even not do that if you don't, if you want to, but they say it can shift or move slightly in shipping. So you, they recommend that you check the bed level, uh, before you print, but it's pretty much guaranteed to work. I mean, it's so easy. It it's could like have been simpler. Camera mounts for FPV, uh, battery oh, uh, holders. Yeah. Extra. I'm going to print like a, a tool caddy thing for some of my tools and testers paint holder and, um, all kinds of RC goodies. I actually had a buddy of mine that's a cell plane guy um, ask me to print a little uh, specialty nut thing for one of his, uh, for something he's got. He's been having to outsource that and order them. And he was like, could you print it? And I was like, yeah. And I looked, it was like an 11 minute print job. I was like, yeah, I got you covered, wow. man. I don't what think you print anything in 11 minutes. But what about like what I... templates, Matt? Yeah. Could you print out anything, I, I guess? I, I've printed a quad frame before. I print toys for my son. I print uh, fidget spinners. That's yeah, right. let me see. All right, let's That's see your right. fidget. I just did a very basic fidget spinner, but even having those bearings in it is the is it's better than the ones you get at the store. I printed this tiny whoop case here. Heck yeah! Uh, so there you go. You can see uh, these little elephant. Let's see your elephant. An elephant feet. Well, Jason, when you need to sell that first one you bought, let me know. Yeah, I don't think I will. I mean, it's been running nonstop pretty much since I've got it. It's and only 200 bucks, man. Two. Jim, sell something, RC. <laughs> yeah, I but couldn't like, believe the price, $200. Like my daughter right now needs glasses. She has them. She sat on them. And then I'm thinking, and I can't get them back together. I, and I thought, maybe I could print that chick some frames, you know? The only problem with it is the print bed size. So there's a lot of things that I like want that I can't print on that until I get the this one up and running, right. uh, which will be later this afternoon probably. But um, for four hundred dollars to be able to print larger items and and do everything that best thing can do. Oh, you um, got that from Gearbest from Sarah Do, right? Yeah, Sarah Do. She did. She got it. Sarah Do. She's What's working hard to do it right. Nice. Sorry, Matt. What'd you say? What, what's it called? Said, what did Sarah do? Uh, <laughs> hey, by the way, when you said uh, auto price the other day, I checked on something because it was ringing a bell. This is a little known amplifier that everybody brags about because it's so awesome. It's made by Mono Price. It's 199 bucks. It's all tube. It's it's like a 1950s uh, style amp made by this company, and and everyone that buys it loves it. So, it's only 199 bucks. Nice. That that by the way is about as cheap as it gets. You're losing money if you don't buy it. 
Yeah, you got to buy it, even if you don't play the guitar. Well, yes, you could buy the, buy the printer, and then you can just make one of those. You could get pretty far, I think, before you had to uh, <laughs> source some parts from. <laughs> oh, by the way, so I had just gotten my printer and went to the field Monday for the Labor Day thing. And a guy, the guy that we know from our local uh, uh, club, brought out a fully 3D printed Cessna 150. Um, and how did it fly? It uh, and he he printed it on a print bed that's the same size as this one. Oh so my I god! I can print whole, you wow. know, not whole airframes, but you print the airframe parts and you glue it together. He didn't fly it. Um, he actually broke uh, the nose wheel steering arm. Uh, before he brought it out. So he just brought it to put on display until he could print that part um, again. So pretty cool, though, that you could print these airplanes. I've seen them fly. I've seen like a P-38 printed plane fly, and they fly really good. Yeah, I could just only imagine the time involved in printing one. It's, unless it's you really, <laughs> yeah, Unless you really optimize your printer for speed over yeah. quality and still get the, uh, the uh, structural integrity, I don't see that being worthwhile for me quite yet. Yeah, but parts and pieces and stuff, I'm all over it, man. This is so much fun. Can you believe we have cranked out an hour at this point? Holy hour. All right. Well, bye, guys. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> hey, I just got an email. Racha from Ready Made RC. Racha. This is their favorite items this week. The Sunrise BL Hell 32 Siskin 31AX4. BL Hell. Long name. What with Jim? BL Hell. Like BL Hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good uh, thing to put on my license plate. And then we have the recruit. And look at that, Matt Gunn. That thing you just held up. They actually Pretty close it. to it. Yeah, that's the uh, nice little um, the Strix hanger, which fits your tiny whoop. It also fits the um, micro charger. That charger and some buck trees. Head strap. That's pretty cool. I'd wear that. I got one of those. And more. Hey, if you see anyone from ReadyMade, tell them that we were talking about them on the RC Groups podcast, the world's largest and most, and most active. active RC network. Yes, sir. Stopping and back. All oh, right. So stopped. It's off. Hey, can you turn that off for a second? Oh, no, I didn't stop <laughs> oh, it. It's off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd stop the broadcast. <laughs> I did not. Hey, uh, thanks to all our live viewers have been hanging out for the whole dang thing. I guess we were pure RC this time. We had a lot of built up uh, RC energy we had to release. There was a lot of tension <laughs> that needed to come out. <laughs> uh, Jason Cole, I'm not joking. Let's find something to fly and not just HD. We uh, If we, we go out to the field, we should have uh, non-HD. I agree both, yeah. I got you covered on both. And I could DVR both, and hopefully you can see the difference uh, through well, the DVR. You can't DVR the HDMI portion. Mm -hmm. You're only going to be able to DVR the 5.8 feed. So That's why you guys the uh, the HDMI DVR that I have. It's only fifty bucks. Yeah, and it works. But could you well. even do that with Fat Sharks? Because <laughs> I guess you'd have to do it before you go into the goggles. You'd you have just to put it in it. line. Yeah. Andy yeah. Eagles says he needs a cigarette because of all our RC tension. <laughs> 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 That's pretty good, actually. Um, before we bail out of here, let's see. I'm trying to find something to show you guys. I can't find it. Never mind. Uh, Jason's about to go to the Bruce. Hey, to Bruce. And you're going to eat at, by the way, Colonel Sanders is from the same town as the Bruce is held at. And I guess this is Colonel's barn or uh, where he started, originated from. They turned it to a restaurant and you get to go eat there. They have a big banquet for the Bruce. Oh, my God. I do that this year. Oh, you're not. No, I'll be here. I'll be here next Thursday because I'm leaving Friday morning. No, we're doing it in his barn on the field now. Everything's happening Easy at the field. Tough guy. Yep. Hey, did uh, your birthday present not show up? I guess I, I, I have nothing but that is lost in the mail. mail. No, no, I, I saw actually it just shipped like a couple of three days ago. So, ah. man, well, I, I will be waiting. I think you're gonna like it. Awesome. I mean, everyone's wearing thongs. And it does require four double D batteries or just D batteries. Okay, we've gone too far. As long as it's four D batteries. As long as it's uh, got the American flag on it, I'm it's in. America. Hey, hey, thanks to all our live listeners. Two words, buttless chaps. <laughs> I Van just... Halen. Thanks to Hornet NZ, Steve Wattenberg, Andy Engel. Um, RCG Videos, that guy is always on this show uh, in a live feed. And uh, Matt Angler, underscore one. 
the, for the other Matt Angler that's on the uh, whatever this is. All right, and wait, I got one more. Gap to FG Granny. Gap Tooth Granny. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all y'all. I have not had any silly name changes this week, so I got nothing to uh, give you there. But uh, be sure to check out RC Groups, Flying Giants, and Heli Freak, and uh, check out the news updates and the cool new threads. I should have a mass email coming out soon. And uh, I guess we're going to the field, and there'll be more fun to come from there. Matt Gunn, what are you doing in the next week? I'm just hoping that the weather gets nice. Ah, it's sunny outside. I got to go. <laughs> Sunny I'm gonna go try to fly the uh, do the torrent review. I haven't been able to do it with that. With there's been no sun. I'm not. I'm not shooting reviews anymore when it's overcast. It just doesn't bring. Oh, it doesn't Lord. make the video pop. Good thing you don't I, live I in Seattle. I'm missing flying my kite, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go down to Florida. I've heard it's gonna get windy there soon. You oh, could man. ride your kite back to Tennessee. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what would happen. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching. We got uh, RC business to do and tension to build up. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host with the lovely Jason Cole and the always awesome Matt Gunn. Pew, 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 pew. Keep it real, yeah. meow. There my damn there. Hey, meow. Hitting the butt. Hey, Mr. Grumpy.